Hey guys, and welcome back to Medieval. When we last left off, we had some fun in the uh, pumpkin patch. And, uh, well, we uh, smashed a few pumpkins, if you catch my drift. This time, we're going to the Sleepy Village. And things are going to be slightly more interesting here. We have the resident villagers, which we cannot hurt. Because if we do, that will actually take souls out of our chalice. Um, I've already done about half of this mission before I realized that the sound from the PlayStation 4 was not actually being recorded because um, I had my headphones plugged into my control pad and not in my monitor. Now, with the Xbox, that wouldn't matter, but because this is the feckin' PlayStation, uh, Sony says you can only have one output source selected at a time. Damn it! Sort your fucking shit out, Sony. Anyway, let's go. Ah, in other news, um, we've also hit our saving goal for the Xbox One X. So, I guess we will be getting an Xbox One X for Christmas. Well, I'm going to buy one for the missus for her birthday. Uh, for her birthday. Her birthday's in a few days. Uh, for Christmas. Uh, however, the PlayStation 5, well, we're still saving for that bad boy. And to be honest, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm actually more excited about the Xbox, to be honest. Like, the backwards compatibility and stuff. <laughs> Easy, big fella. Now, don't worry about it, Dan. We have this all under control, I'm sure. Yeah, way more excited about the Xbox. Poor villagers. The master possesses them. It mustn't hurt them. Hurt guards, though. They seek out an object of great power. Don't worry, buddy. We will uh, not hurt the guards. Uh, not hurt the villagers, I should say. We're definitely going to hurt the guards. The metal monstrosities that they are. Right, let's have a little look into our guidebook. Because we didn't hear this last time. Winner of the jolliest witch in Galamere Award for the fourth consecutive year. Wartilda actually runs a successful potions business and makes cool cheddar from her pumpkin spice profiteering. The other witches are secretly jealous. Oof. I guess they're not all friends. Okay. Uh, one thing I do want to buy myself, though, I do want to get one of the new... Oh, we've got the rats. Yes, you actually have to kill a rat to get that. But uh, we did that <laughs> in my failed video. Uh, yeah, I do want to get myself one of the new Xbox control pads, though. These rats seem harmless, but they have tiny fingers, and they're probably plotting something terrible. Oof. Each rat you squish is an act of treason against the mighty rat king, Dirk. <clears throat> okay, well, they are absolutely plotting something fiendish. Look at them. And we have the townspeople. Hypnotized citizens of a once thriving town. They'll happily invite you in for tea, but if they ask to borrow a shovel, you should probably decline. Yeah, uh, I don't think I'll be sitting at their table. Right, let's go, Dan. We have a village to save. Now, this mission is interesting. It's not a linear mission. There are a lot of little areas that we can indeed go to. Uh, also, these villagers will attack the shit out of you. And you cannot hit them back. Because otherwise you won't be able to get the chalice of the mission. But you're not defenseless. You can daring dash them. That doesn't hurt them, but it does stun them. It actually stuns them for a good long while as well, so bear that in mind. Yeah, I really am looking forward to the Xbox One X. Uh, the Xbox Series X. Fuck, Microsoft. Sort your shit out. Um, because it will play a chunk of Xbox original games. More coming. Oh, nice. It will play over half of the Xbox 360 library. It will play all of the Xbox One library, uh, much improved. And obviously it will play the new games. I mean, like, come on, man. Like, you can't, you can't deny that that is impressive as feck. Come on. It is hard to hit these guys with the daring dash. There we go. 
Uh, whereas, unfortunately, with the PlayStation 5, it's like, yeah, some PlayStation 4 games are probably going to work eventually. Most of them will probably work, maybe, but not all of them. Sorry, Sony, but that's fucking pathetic. Right. Uh, now, we have that. We have... Did we get the... Yeah, we have not got that yet. Let's go turn the water off. I'm getting really turned around because I've like just done all of this. So I can't remember what exactly I've done and what I haven't done, which is brilliant. Oh god. Um, dude, can you not like punch me in the back? There we go. There's our first rune. However, that's not the rune we need right now, but we shall take it. Out of the way, chap. Oh no, I'm getting punched in the ass. That's fine. I guess our ass is made for a good beating. Now, um, so we've got that, which we can stick in there, but we need, do we listen to that? The rune key is held aloft by the flow of water from the fountain. You may have to wait for the next Yeah, uh, we're way ahead of you, narrator. Also, that narrator is badass. We need to go in here. Um, I forget her name off the top of my head, but she was also Janine King in... What was it? She was Janine King in Blue Stinger. Uh, she was also... She did all the voices and sounds for the infected and the clickers in The Last of Us 1. I don't know about the second game. And she did. She was huge, man. She did loads of video game voices. She was also... Oh, God. Um, one of the characters from Diablo 2... I want to say the the witch, Arya, I think she was called, but I don't think it was her. It was that uh, main woman that you'd speak to in the camp. Uh, she had a lot of voice dialogue there. So, we need to go, not the troll's head. We've been in there. <clears throat> this mission always turns me around. We don't need to go in there just yet. We need to go into the storage area. Yes, the storage area, which is... Oh, bloody hell. Damn civilians. We need to go through here. Come on, Dan. Yes, this is more like it. Oh, we don't want to use that rune just yet. All right, let's give a shove of this barrel because we need to open a trap door by using this switch. Dan already knows this stuff. And I love the way his head... Why is, why is, why is Dan's head spinning around? Why does... I never noticed that. Dan's head spins around like a screw when you push stuff. <laughs> the fuck? Okay, that's. I thought that was a bug. I thought it was glitching out, but I guess that's the way it is. Right, anyway, there we go. And that's going to activate that trapdoor over there. Uh, as you can see, if you break the barrel, uh, the trapdoor goes back down. Uh oh. We've let her out. We've let her out. Run. Run. Uh, okay, fine. Now, down in the cellar, we have some rats. Yeah, some evil rats plotting no good, I have no doubts. We could actually start squishing these guys for money. But they're actually surprisingly hard to hit. Unless you do that, of course. There we go. Now, it does mention the rat god in the um, entry in the uh, Galamir book. But, unfortunately, you can't, like, upset the Rat God or anything like that. I think that would have been, like, a pretty cool little uh, cameo or a little bit of a Easter egg. If you kill all the rats, maybe the Rat God comes down to kick your ass. A secret boss, that would have been fun. But, alas, no. Sorry, buddy, you're going to have to cool off for a second. We need to go upstairs. Hey, guys. How's it hanging? Low and lazy, I bet. Yeah, that there and dash really doesn't work very well. Oh God! Quick, let's get the book. Bust of Mr. Shanks, landlord of the Troll's Head, to clean the statue, lower the pedestal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, I'm not sure why it's so high up, but don't worry. We shall sort that out. All right, go down, Dan. Good man. Ah, oh, you fool, Dan. You fool. Oh, God. All right, knock him out. 
Okay. They actually do stay stunned for a good amount of time. And we have some gold. Excellent. Alright, there goes the bust. Yeah, he's still stunned. They do they do stay stunned for about 30 odd seconds. Now we have the bust. Excellent. Oh, God. We're definitely going to clean it. And we're definitely not going to sell it. And we absolutely will not be uh, smelting it down to make religious effigies. No, sir. No, that does not sound like something that we will do. Oh, bloody hell. Run. Jesus Christ. Fuck me. Run, Dan. <sighs> Uh-oh. I think Little Red Riding Hood there is just beating our ass. Mm-hmm. If we don't find the Shadow Artifact, Lord Zarak will have us mocking out the demons for the next millennium. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. Fair enough. Uh, come at me. Well, Dan, looks like we have new enemies. Now, these guys are actually fairly tough, I suppose. Let's have a little look at them. They do a lot of damage if you let them. So, uh, I guess it's best not to let them. Boiler guards. I always like their design as well. Xerox Mechanical Goon Squad. Developed deep in the city of madness. Although manufactured in China. Of course. <laughs> of course. That coal in their stomach fuels them. Whilst also cooking up a mean brisket. Mm, okay. That's one way to sort out uh, soldiers' food supply on the move. Right, there we go. Although, they probably don't need to eat anything other than coal, which would probably be significantly harder to supply. There we go. Well, we are 85% on the chalice. This is good. Okay, so we've got the bust. We... what do we need? We've got the bust. We don't have the... We haven't been in here yet. We don't have the uh, cast. That's what we need. Right, but we do have a lot of books. Dude, come on, man. I'm just here to do some light reading. History of Galomir, volume There's a lot of books here. During the dark time that was Galomir's not too distant past, it was King Peregrine who thwarted Zerok the Necromancer and his plan to enslave the land. Zerok. Once the king's mage had fallen out of favor with the ruler for conducting outlandish experiments on the bodies of the dead. It was said that deep within Peregrine Castle, the dead were restless. The dead are to be honored, not kept as the playthings of alchemists, declared King Peregrine as he banished Zerok from the castle. Good man. All of Zerok's living dead were routed out and destroyed. Oof. Zerok, being an unforgiving soul, went into hiding and vowed to wreak his revenge on the king. Yes, King Peregrine was a pretty just fellow from what I can understand. A good king. Uh, oh, he's still stunned. Man, they do stay stunned for ages. History of uh -oh. Yavnir, Volume 2. That's a shot. Rumors of ill-doing and dark deeds abounded through the land of Galamir. It was whispered that Zerok had employed the aid of shadowy demons to help build a vast castle. Under the cover of night, Zerok's dark army spilled forth from the corrupt haven. The army marched south across the Silver Mountains and through the Silver Woods. Soon afterwards, even the pumpkin lands belonged to Zerok. The folk of Gallows Town cried out for help. Save us, good King Peregrine. Retaliation was swift and violent. King Peregrine's forces, led by the brave Sir Fortescue, mm -hmm. drove Zerok's army back from Gallows Town. Oh, there was much rejoicing, but the war was not yet over. So, Dan, Ach ow, you bastard! Do you not know who I am? I saved your town. Oi, oi! Damn it. Come on. Oh, look. Stop being a git and let me stun you. You see me? I see you too. Well, actually, technically, I don't. Hey, fine. History of Galomir, Volume 3. News that Xerox army had now taken the floodlands caused much concern. 
From this vantage point, Zarok could march west to take the enchanted forest. This sacred place would prove a bitter defeat if it fell into the hands of the evil sorcerer. It was Sir Dan Fortescue who once again led the king's militia to rid the demon host from the land. Yet the evil wizard was cunning and had prepared an ambush. Titanic battle ensued, of which history has never seen the like. It is said that the day would have gone to Zerok, but for the skill and valor of one man. Fortescue led the charge deep into the massed ranks of the undead, felling Zerok's bodyguard, the fearful Lord Cardoc and before finally succumbing to his own mortal wounds, slew the traitorous sorcerer with a mighty sweep of his sword. Mm-hmm. That's not quite how it went down, is it, Dan? But, you know, from reading these books, it sounds like there were several engagements, and Dan was involved in all of them. So, hmm. History of Galamir, Volume 4. The forces of evil were destroyed, but at a terrible price. None but a handful of the king's militia returned from that field. Galamir lost a whole generation of young men that day, including Canny Tim, the legendary crossbowman, and Fortescue's second in command, who fell in the first volley of the road. <laughs> Zerok's body was never found, though if it lies unmourned in an unmarked grave, then no one in Galamir would shed a tear. The shadow demons that had fallen under Zerok's banner were unnatural creatures that did not belong in the world of mortal men. The king declared that they be banished, entombed under the pure earth of the enchanted earth, imprisoned within an impregnable box of the king's design. The demons were buried deep underground. Their tomb was sealed with a magical device that has since come to be known as the shadow. Artifact. Hmm, sounds like we might need uh, something like that. Now, that's quite interesting. Apparently, Canny Tim was killed in the first volley of arrows. Now, if you remember what, uh, what we heard before, I'm pretty sure, obviously, Dan died in the first volley, not Canny Tim. And it was Canny Tim that actually killed, uh, was it Zarok or he killed his um, bodyguard? So, Canny Tim was quite the hero, actually. Tourist guide to oh, that's part one. Tourist guide to Galamir, part one. The land of Galamir is a wondrous land of breathtaking sights and adventure. If it's beauty you are looking for, be sure to check out the sights of the enchanted forest. Scale the heights and see the nests of giant dragons. Dragon birds, eh? Seek out weird and wonderful plant life. Go ooh and ah at the sight of baby dragon toads splashing about in the crystal clear pond. Yes, they're fun. Why not take a walk through the pumpkin valley? Pumpkin is Galomir's favorite dish, and about now the valley is just bulging under the weight of young podlings awaiting harvest. <laughs> yeah, well, we have harvested most of them. Heroes from History, a retrospective. Chapter 1. In addition to being the strongest man who ever lived, Stanier Iron Hero was unsurpassed in his skill as a blacksmith. He was equally happy pounding on his anvil at home as he was pounding on someone's head in battle. <laughs> <laughs> it was said that his only fear was the end of the village smithy as the focus of manufacture in favor of more centralized units. <laughs> as if. Oh, man. Oh, God. There's a lot here, guys. Uh... Chapter two. Oh. Born a humble peasant okay. to one of the nomadic tribes from the Eastlands, Blood Manoth Skullcleaver gathered an army of horsemen and swept over half the civilized world. When he finally died, attempting a single-handed attack on a garrison in the north while armed only with a spike on his head, <laughs> he was the richest and most powerful peasant of his day. Damn. Yeah, um, I definitely, first time round that I played this, don't remember all of this being read out. I'm quite happy with that. Chapter 3. 
Karl Sterngar spent most of his formative years under siege at his family castle. With his impregnable magic shield, Sterngar's motto was, the best form of attack is defense. Sadly, his shield couldn't protect him against poor eating habits, and he died during a post-battle feast while swallowing a large sausage he had failed to chew. <laughs> what a way to go. <laughs> Come on. Chapter four. Truly the hero's hero. Woden the mighty was Woden. fearless, single-minded, and uncompromising. Unbeaten in combat, he inspired raw fear in friends and enemies alike. <laughs> Not to mention in close family members and pets. Oof, yeah, he's kind of a dick, though. Chapter five. Trained from birth in all forms of combat. Imanzi Shongama was the warrior queen of a tribe of Amazons. The bold and the beautiful Shongama banished all males from her territory, except the handful she kept on to mow the lawns of her people. <laughs> Is that an innuendo? <laughs> we'll be seeing her soon. A full-time mother and homemaker, Megrin Stormbinder had to defend her settlement from barbarian raiders while the menfolk were away on a hunting trip. She fought off repeated attacks, armed only with a pitchfork and a rolling pin, and with one arm holding her baby. Damn. Legend has it that the gods, impressed by her indomitable courage, intervened and added thunderbolts to her arsenal. She won the battle with a couple of bolts to spare on her husband when he finally returned. <laughs> we'll be seeing her as well. We're seeing all of these. Come on. Next. Time is money. Chapter 7. Dirk Steadfast was a fearsome Dirk. opponent <laughs> thanks to his magic sword Dirk. and a firmly held belief that only women defend themselves. Real men are always on the attack. He was a friend and contemporary of Karl Sterngard and was with him even to the end. It was whilst Steadfast was explaining his views on Sterngard's shield during a feast that the latter had his tragic and inexplicable accident. Choking on sausage. <laughs> I'm 34, I promise. <laughs> Choking on sausage. Brilliant. <laughs> what a way to go. Chapter 8. Descended from the finest centaur of bloodstock, Raven Hooves the Archer was the last prince of his people. A proud and haughty aristocrat, he was an accomplished hunter, sportsman, duelist, playboy, raconteur, and three times derby winner. Damn, son. That's pedigree. Ah. Chapter Damn. 9. Captain of the militia in the time of King Peregrine, Sir Daniel Fortescue found fame when he killed the renegade wizard, Zerok. A career soldier raised in the royal household. He was adored by the men under his command and renowned for his loyalty to Galamir. It was said that Fortescue was always destined for greatness. With his square jaw, steely gaze, and thick shock of hair as black as raven's wings, oh, he looked every inch the hero. Damn, son. You was a handsome boy, Dan, back in the day. Well, you may now be bones and... Oh, God. Bones and... Uh... Your, your life is long past, you know, fleshy fun, long past, but uh, at least... To this guide to Galamere, part Damn it, always interrupting me. mystery you're looking for, then the seasoned adventurer should travel to the ruins of King Peregrine's castle. Yes, this is the fortress from which the fabled King Peregrine once hailed. It is said that the king's crown was lost in the dungeons below the castle, and that the ghost of the regent himself now haunts these cold stone passageways. Interesting. Spooky. Why not take the swamps and seek out the mythical town of Melomy? Mm. This place was once said to be a place of fantastical arcane alchemy, but an age has passed since it was consumed by the murky swamps. Perhaps great treasure awaits any adventurer that can locate its watery resting place. Damn. 
Treasure, you say? Excellent. Yes, so Dan may have shuffed off his uh, mortal coil, but he will become much more in death than he ever was in life. To whom it may concern, I must make haste, for Xerox men will be here within the hour. I have taken the crucifix from the church. It is the key to a key. Hmm. I used the cross to make the attached cast. Then I had it destroyed. It is my hope that this cast falls into the hands of a just and good hero. Signed, the town mayor. Well, Mr. Mayor, bloody hell. I guess you lucked up, son. Because uh, our boy Dan is here to save the day. Right, so we have all the pieces we need to go and produce another crucifix, which is great. Let's go do just that. We need to go to the stables. Or the, I don't know. Well, I guess it is kind of the stables. It's more the blacksmithing area. Right. Money. Give me money. Obviously, this is a lucrative business, so that explains why it's full of gold. Blacksmith's Monthly. Old man Willie Green of Willie Green was awarded Smithy of the Season by our readers. Mm -hmm. His outstanding casts have produced many intricate and hard-wearing iron goods and sculptures. Willie only uses the finest of metals in his work, and is particularly noted for his magnificent busts. <laughs> Old man Willie was quoted as saying, Aye, when I get pumping on me bellows, there's no stopping me. It's all in the rhythm, up and down, up and down. I've always been inspired by the stories of Stanya Iron Hewer, <laughs> the greatest smithy that ever was. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I think most of the budget for this game probably went into the voice acting. Uh, but hey, that's not exactly a bad thing. Right, so. We need the crucifix cast. We need the bust. And we need to get pumping. Ready, Dan? All in the rhythm, mate. There we go. Look at that. Imagine pumping these bellows. Jesus Christ. Talk about backache. There we go. She's ready. Look at that. Perfect. Now, to the church. Alright, Dan. Let's go. There's a life fountain in here. Oh, oh, that tickles. Oh, that's so nice. Lovely. Right, now we're charged and ready. Let's go read this book. Man, there's a lot of reading in this submission, isn't there? Well, at least a lot of narration. And hey, that's okay. A crucifix once stood here, but the mayor took it. Find a replacement and see how the church should really look. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure it looks... Just the same, just with a cruise. Oh, interesting. Hidden sorcery in a church, eh? Hmm, okay. Dear sir or madam, on my travels across Galamere, I have come across many mysterious and enchanting finds. However, that which filled me with deepest dread was discovery of the tomb of the shadow demons. The key to their dank prison the mysterious shadow artifact is now in my possession. Yours fearfully, the town mayor. Right, well, I guess we're going to the mayor's house. Wonder if he's home. Maybe he can cook us up a nice broth or something. Right, okay, Dan. Uh, we need to go. That's the entrance to the mayor's house. But we can't go in there just yet. We need to go around the outside. In through the gardens. Mm, lovely. We'll be back here later. Okay, so what do we have? A trap door. That's the heroic way, Dan. I like the way the sword in that little scene there was actually um, enchanted and glowing. If only, Dan. Oh, I can't smash those. Right, let's go slay some uh, boiler guards. Because we did see a few walking around here. Bloody hell! There we go. Nice. We need one more. One more boiler guard. Don't do this to me, game. Really? You're going to do this to me? That means we're going to have to come back here. Ooh. That's a rat. We're going to have to come back here later then. 
God damn it. If there was three boiler guards here, we'd have enough to collect the chalice. The chalice, by the way, is through here. Damn it. There we go. Yes, there we go. One chalice. Let's go collect some gold. And top up on health. Right, well, uh, I mean, I guess the front door's locked, so there's only really one thing we can do. Act like Santa Claus. There we go. Jolly old Bonesy. Now, this is the mayor's digs, huh? Not bad. Oh, he's left a little bit of gold around for us. Nothing too crazy, but, you know, a little bit. Let's open the gate. It's like we have four boiler guards waiting for us when we get out of here. <laughs> nice. Right. Uh, now, we had a key here somewhere, didn't we? Yeah, so we go. Safe key. No safe is safe. Well, I mean, I wouldn't thought it'd work on every safe, would it? And there's the shadow artifact. Ooh, boy. Give shadow demons a helping hand. Yeah, let's not, huh? Shadow demons are actually pretty bloody terrifying in this game. They really are quite powerful. And nasty little bastards. Uh, right, let's go kill these guys. Don't worry about it, Dan. What are you worried about these guys for? These pathetic peasants. Chumps, Xarox goons. You really do worry about too much, Dan, honestly. Yeah, we'll grab it. Right, now let's go grab the chalice and get the bloody hell out of here. I think our work here is done. The village is saved, although I don't know where the village has gone. The Hall of Heroes awaits. It certainly does. Ah, not bad. Not bad at all. Capture that greedy profiteer, the town mayor. Take him to the asylum dungeons. Give the fat boy a good going over. Locate the shadow artifact. Bring me back something nice. Oh, he doesn't want much, does he, Zarok? Well, soon enough we'll be putting a sword up his ass. The Hall of Heroes. So, I wonder... Ah, I know what we're going to get. Yeah. We're going to go get the spear. I don't like the spear. Uh, maybe I should give it a bit more of a chance, maybe. We definitely need some more crossbow bolts. Yeah. Cheap enough, I suppose. Greedy bastard. Right, so, eight chalices down. Starting to fill out quite nicely here now, isn't it? Not looking too shabby. Now let's go get the spear. The spear's an interesting weapon, but I just never found it that useful. Damn, damn, damn. Yes, damn Don't you. Shy. I've seen you giving me the eye. Oof. You may be weak and feeble like me, <laughs> but I like you, Dan. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now listen up. You're going Death by Snoo Snoo. Snoo Snoo. Jumped, yeah. But if you want to pack some serious heat, you should take this spear. Well, we'll take it, I suppose. Now the spear, yeah, it's interesting. We can hold thirty of them. Spear today, gone tomorrow. Now we can throw them, or. I said, hang on. I guess we can only throw them. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, I guess we can only throw the spears. I thought that um, we could use them in melee as well, but I guess not. They're also quite expensive, I believe. A hundred gold for ten. Let's make it worth it, boys. There we go. Maybe we'll try them. There we go. Enjoy your meal, buddy. Right, let's get out of here, Dan. I'm going to leave the Hall of Heroes. A hero, kind of.
almost almost a half hero. I mean, we've got half of the chalices now. I'm pretty sure there's 21. And to get the best ending in the game, the true ending, you do need to collect them all. So, guys, that ends the sleeping village. We will be back there later because there is a little added bonus in the PlayStation 4 game that I don't think was in the original. Um, a little bit annoying. It's a bit of a weird thing from what I can remember. But, um, yeah, there is a little bit left after you finish the game. Um, where we have to return lost souls. It, it's kind of cool. We go back through levels uh, with these souls and you can talk to certain characters. I can't really remember exactly what it entails now, but I think you just get a trophy. But due to the nature of how I intend to do this let's play, we will be doing it. Um, I don't think you can actually do it until you finish the game, though. So we'll, we'll look and into that and cover that has and when. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.